Okay, welcome back to part two, froggies. And this is gonna be all about the watercolor painting of your frog. And I've shown you my paint palette before and how I like to take the black and the brown out and mix colors because I think they just look a lot better. So I took the black and brown out of my um, color palette and I kept the blue and the purple down here, the dark colors, and then I put the lightest color at the beginning. But we don't have that in our watercolor palettes. And you'll also notice I have little little cups that have dividers so I could mix colors without them going together. But the color palette that we are going to use is the one I sent home for you. And here it is. And the colors look nice and bright. Uh, the brush is a little bit smaller. So if you have another brush, you can certainly use it. You don't have to use this brush but uh, I'm going to because that's what I sent home with you and I just want to see how it works. So the very first thing you need to learn is that your brush needs to be taken care of. Okay and when you're taking care of your brush and taking care of your colors then everything will stay beautiful and you'll have your watercolors for a long time. Now I took a little spoon so you'll need your color palette, your drawing, You'll need a cup of water. I've got a little jar here. And my goal is to keep my cup of water really clean. I'm gonna keep it really clean. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I took a little spoon and I put a drip of water on each of the colors, except not brown and black. I can't take them out of this color palette. I'd like to, but this one, they don't pop out. So I'm just gonna ignore them. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing you need to know about watercolor is they're thirsty. They like to be wet when you're using them, and your brush likes to be full of paint so that you can push and glide the color across the area you're painting. If it's dry, it doesn't work so well. So each time that you get color, you don't need to rinse every time. You don't need to rinse out your brush every time because sometimes you're going to paint with that color again. You're just gonna waste it and put it in your water? No, especially if you made a beautiful color. Another thing that you need to remember is if you're mixing colors, always choose the lightest color first. So let's say you want to make a green. You would always put yellow in the uh, space first, then put a tiny bit of blue in the space. Because if you start with blue, and then you put your brush in the yellow, that yellow is gonna get yucky really fast. So let's go ahead and mix a green. Now, I do have a green in my palette, but I'm gonna show you what to do with that later. So I'm gonna put some yellow over here and I have a nice puddle, my color's getting nice and moist, and this brush actually is doing pretty good soaking it up. I got my color a little bit wet, so I'm not gonna need to add, I've never used this kind before, and so I'm going to make a little puddle here and get some yellow there. My brush doesn't hold a whole lot, but you can see that I'm laying my brush. Sometimes if you roll it around, it gets paint. Then I'm sort of pressing it down and letting the, the color go out. So that's the first thing. You need to have that. And then when you add your dark color, you always just want to get a little bit. Now, why should I don't need to rinse my brush? Why? Because I'm already going to mix a color and this is a light color so it's not going to really hurt the blue to have a little yellow in it. We can always clean that out. So I'm not going to rinse my brush right now. I'm going to get a little blue and I'm going to mix it in. And oh, I made kind of a nice light green. I think I want a little darker for my first frog painting so I'm going to put a little bit more blue in there. That's kind of a nice color. Alright, I, I like blue green a little bit more. So I'm not going to rinse my brush. I just made all this color. I have a paint full of brush, uh, sorry, a paintbrush full of paint, and I want to use it so I'm not going to waste it in the water, right? Got to resist. Don't put it in the water. I'm actually going to do my whole head this color, except not the eyes. So I'm going to push the paint around. And one thing you can do too, if you're, if you feel like this is just a really dry, you can actually use a little spray bottle or you can, with your paintbrush, you can actually paint this wet. You can actually get some water, 
put it on there and it will loosen up your paint and let it flow a little better. So that's what I did. I just got a little bit of clear water and put it in my paint. But I am gonna use up all this paint. I might need a little more water. My paintbrush doesn't hold a lot. And if I just add a little water to my brush, I just, I dipped my paint brush in the water when it was almost done. See how the color is almost gone from my paintbrush? Now I can get some water without making it green, which that's what I wanna do. And I'm gonna paint the rest of my face this color. So the colors look good. I've never used this kind of watercolor paint before, but it was the only one I could find that I could get a whole bunch of boxes at one time. And so I wanted everyone to get one. And so that's why I ordered it. Also the colors look nice and bright, which I do like this color. But down below his mouth here, I'm gonna make it just a little darker. And so I'm gonna get a little bit more blue there. And down below is, you know what? I'm gonna put a tiny bit of green in there. And that is gonna make an interesting color. That's a little bit darker than the color above. Maybe a little bit bluer too, that's okay. Oh yeah, now my paintbrush is almost finished with color. I'm gonna get a little water and make that flow. So I'm just gonna paint this with clear water and then get my paintbrush to get that paint to flow over. If you are watercolor paint, this paint uh, paper that I got you is really heavy. It's like professional paper. This is what a professional would paint on. So it's really heavy, it's good for watercolor. You could get it pretty wet. But watercolor likes to be wet, but it doesn't like to be scrubbed. If you're scrubbing the watercolor, what happens is your paper starts to break down, and then you get all these little pieces of your paper kind of make mucking up your paint. So I have finished my head and I'm pretty happy with it. I think he looks great. He's a little lighter here. If I wanted to, I could put some more paint there, but I don't really want to. But it's time to clean our brush. We do not put it in the water. I've got blue and green in here and I'm going to do a different color. And so here is how you clean your brush. You need a paper towel, your paintbrush. Without rinsing, you put it down on your paper towel, squeeze it gently, and then open. And then squeeze it gently and then swish it in the water, okay? Let's see if I can keep my water clean. We'll just see. Wow. Now you go back to your paper towel, squeeze it gently in a new spot, and there's no color there now where I squeezed it this time, so I know my brush is clean. And my water is clean. I did not get any paint in my water. I didn't waste any paint, and I didn't get my water dirty, so I can use it like I did before to get the area clean. Now I'm gonna do this little patch here and I want it to be kind of an orangey color. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of that clear water and I am gonna get my paper wet because this paper is pretty dry for these, these paints. These paints don't hold that much water. Okay, I want to make an orangey color but I need to take the lightest color first. So again, I'm going to get some of that yellow but I'm gonna put it over here away from my green that I mixed. I'm gonna put it way over here. Make sure you can see that, it's kind of up high, isn't it? All right, so there is my little blob of yellow. I'm not coloring, I'm not painting a very big spot with this, so I'll just make a little bit. Now I'm gonna get a little orange. And, okay, I'm kind of liking that. Frogs can be all kinds of different colors, and you can make your frog as colorful as you want it to be, um, or you can make it just one whole color. Some people like to just paint their frog one color. If you wanna paint your frog one color, mix a lot of it. And look at how much nicer it looks when I have these mixed greens and bluish greens. If I just put plain green on there, he would not be very interesting. But already you can see that my frog is gonna be super interesting. and. He's right out of my imagination. Now, I'm liking this color so much, I decided while I was painting, I'm gonna paint his feet this color. So I don't think you can see his feet. This, is pick, this painting and the paint palette is a little bit too big to show it all to you at once. 
but I really liked that color, so I'm just gonna paint his feet that color. I thought that was a pretty good color. Need a little water, get that paint flowing. Yeah. I'm gonna paint his legs a different color, but I wanted his feet to be this color too. It's kind of nice to paint a couple of areas the same color, then it makes him look like he belongs to his body. Oh yes, you're not just a bunch of pink stripes. You are an actual frog. You could be a real frog. I think my frog is pretty sure that he thinks he's a frog. I'm pretty sure he thinks he's a frog. Okay, so I got my feet that color. Barely had enough because I mixed just a little bit. That's okay. All right, so now I have to decide, well, what color do I want my body to be? I don't really want it to be super green. Um, so I'm not going to go that direction, but I don't want it to be super brown either. I'm thinking that I would like it to be a light, light green. And then maybe I will paint some dark areas. So again, I'm not gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna squeeze it on my paper towel. Oh, look at all the color there. Can you see the color? Okay, and then I squeeze one more time gently. Now I'm gonna swish, swish, swish. My water is still so clean. And now I squeeze again, and there's no color. So my brush is clean and my water is clean. Yay! All right, so let's mix a really light green color. I am going to still use some yellow and I have some color right there. I'm gonna to try to save that in case I wanna put it somewhere. So I'm going to have to put my yellow way over here. Let me pull that back down so you can see me mixing. Cause that's important. This is a color mixing lesson. When we do this in class, it's definitely color mixing. All right, so I'm gonna do some yellow and then I'm going to do some, I think I will go ahead and put some green in there and see what color, ooh, that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna to continue to um, paint his body this color. I really like that color. But I'm also going to mix some other colors and I wanna show you those before I change. So I'm gonna squeeze that paint out of my brush. And I'm gonna focus on color mixing so that you can mix different colors that you might want. So we already mixed yellow and blue and got a green and I put a little more blue to get a little darker. I mixed yellow and green to get this awesome mossy green, I love that. I mixed some yellow and orange to get that sort of darker uh, yellow color, golden sort of color that I like. And I want to mix another color. So I wanna mix a brown for you. And the way that you mix brown is either orange and blue or yellow and purple. Now since I already have a little pile of sort of dark yellow, but that's okay. I'm gonna start with the lightest color, yellow, and I will add just a tiny bit of purple. And I've never used this purple, so I don't know how dark it will be. Oh, I'm gonna need a little bit more. And as you mix it, you can see, and I'm just gonna use the side of my paper here. I'm gonna make a little spot of him that you can see it. Um, I'm just gonna make some little spots like this. And you can see that it's kind of a grayish brown. I'm gonna put freckles on both sides of him so he looks the same. Um, that is sort of a grayish brown, okay? The other brown, and I am squeezing and rinsing and squeezing, okay. The other brown is mixed with orange and blue. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with orange. I'm gonna put it next to this other brown over here, orange. And you just want a tiny bit of the blue to start. And you can always add more if it doesn't turn out the brown color you want. And like I said, I've never mixed this one. This turns out to be more, um, looks more like mud in a way. Um, but I'm gonna make a little bit more blue and see if I can get it a little, oh, I think I might like that a little better. And I'm going to give him some little brown toes. Let's see, I'll, I'll give him a little brown stripe right here. And you can see that that is a really nice brown. 
It's really rich. It looks so much better than the brown in your palette. It's a really nice brown. And you can make it thinner, make it flow. You could give him some stripes up his leg. <laughs> you can just kind of play around with the colors. Um, but when you mix, always mix in your palette. Don't mix in your colors because then you're watercolors will last a lot longer and you'll be able to just clean out the lid where you did all your mixing okay well he's going to have an interesting color markings all right and i'm going to show you one more color that i really love to make i haven't used any red but you can mix red with uh, yellow to make a nice orange color but of course you want to do the yellow first let's just do a little orange right here just a little yellow and red i'm just gonna mix Ooh, that is a nice color so you could maybe make him a nice long sticky tongue with that color anything you want maybe he's gonna have little red dots on the ends of his toes i don't know we'll have to see what i decide to do with that okay and one last color and we almost made it earlier it starts with the green Okay, so you're gonna take this really bright green and then a little blue. And you're gonna make like a really nice turquoise color. I think I'm gonna paint some of my frog with this, maybe his back legs. So those are all the color mix. And you can see how clean my watercolors are. And when I'm all done painting, I'm gonna clean my brush the same way Okay, clean, clean, clean. And then I'm going to leave this the way it is. I'm not going to close the lid or anything. Now, what I could do is take a paper towel and wipe up the remains of my paint in the lid, but don't take the uh, little water out of here and don't shake it around. Just set it so gently just off to the side and let it dry. And if you do that, then all that water will just become color and you'll save your watercolors and they will be with you for a long time. Okay, well, I am going to go ahead and stop the video. I'm gonna finish painting my frog and then uh, maybe I'll share it with you at our Zoom. All right, and I'll see you next time.